thank you all for coming today. I'm Michael Bodak with the National Housing Trust. I kind of feel like we should have some kind of wind turbine up here to gather the wind energy. But we're here to celebrate the solar installation at Channel Square, the largest private solar faci facility here in Washington, D.C. There's been a lot of discussion in the last few years about inequality in America. And usually people talk about income inequality, but we're here today to address energy inequality in part. Climate change is very real, but often when we talk about climate change, it's in connection with something that's going on in wealthier communities and trying to address climate change in wealthier communities. Today, we're here to, to address climate change in an urban setting for low and moderate income people. The National Housing Trust wants to upend the dynamic where low-income people don't get the benefits of better environmental quality. We want to upend the dynamic where low-income people don't get the benefits of, the, of receiving the benefits of lower utility costs. We're committed to clean jobs. We're committed to making sure our residents don't pay more than they should for utilities. And we're committed to cleaning up the environment. We want to see a day when roofs across D.C. will have these same solar so that we can all enjoy the benefits of solar power from the sun. Finally, the residents who you'll hear later have been here, wanted to stay here because they knew this community was improving. Lowering our utility costs allows us to figure out a way to make sure we can keep this housing affordable over the long haul. But we are not doing this alone. We wouldn't be standing here today without the commitment of our financing partners, enterprise community partners, Wells Fargo Foundation, MacArthur Foundation, and the DC Sustainable Energy Utility. In a minute, I'm gonna introduce Mayor Bowser, but I wanted to give a minute to our partners, in particular, Enterprise Community Partners and Enterprise Community Investment. Enterprise Community Investment provided 60% of the equity and debt needed for this facility. We could not have done this without them. Wells Fargo came to us two years ago and said, what can we do for low-income solar. Everybody's doing solar in the suburbs. What can we do for solar in residential areas? And we appreciate that. MacArthur Foundation, who unfortunately couldn't be here today because they couldn't get in yesterday for their flight, um, provided us $2 million of low-cost debt. Allison Clark is committed to upending the dynamic where only the wealthy can, can choose. We want to make sure everyone gets the benefit. And last, and certainly not least, DCSEU. Throughout all of our projects, our 1,000 units in the city, DACSU has been a tremendous partner throughout energy efficiency and renewables and prodding us to do more, and we appreciate everything we, they do. We're also joined today by Somerset Development Company and by the Jonathan Rose Companies. They are the co-owners of this de development. They gave us permission to do, to do this solar, and we're so grateful uh, for their partnership. I want to finally say this is not the first, this is not the last. We are going to continue to do this kind of solar project throughout DC. I want to say that this is not the first time you're going to be with us, you're going to be through this for many, many other times. And I promise you that we will be doing this. We're looking forward to a day when the DC Council will enact and the DC uh, Mayor will sign a bill on renewable portfolio standard so we can do more of this. And finally, I want to thank everybody here who runs great organizations. Um, I, I'm happy to like the National Housing Trust because that's where I work. And um, I think my team is as good as there is. And I want to thank both Jared and Brianna for making today a, a real day of honor. And I want to trust, I want to thank them very much. So we're very fortunate in this city to have a mayor that is not only dedicated to office projects, which are essential, transportation projects, which are essential, but to affordable housing. To a diverse city where people, like the people at Channel Square, can figure out a way to stay here when they are challenged. I'm going to introduce Mayor, mayor Muriel Bowser, who will give us a few remarks about today's city. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yes. 
Well, good morning, everybody. I am always happy to be on a rooftop in Washington, D.C., when you can see the grandeur of the best city in the world. How about that beautiful city of ours? I guess you're not as excited as I am. How about that beautiful city of ours? And um, I think everybody knows that uh, my administration has been very focused on how we will ramp up our efforts, not only for sustainability, uh, but for affordability when it comes to uh, making sure that we're protecting our environment, but also making sure that DC residents can reap the benefits of protecting our environment. The district is investing $10 million to renovate the Channel Square property by 2017. And that includes $1.25 million uh, in investment in solar panels. Uh, these panels will generate roughly 20% of the Channel Square's power needs, fully 20% of the power needs, saving about $20,000 in operating costs each and every year. So we want to make the best use of our dollars to manage affordable housing in D.C. And this investment in, ut in reducing utility costs is su one such way that the government uh, can be involved in making D.C. more affordable. The money we save on operations will help us maintain lower rents and expand resident services. So this project will prove uh, to make sure that affordability and sustainability go hand in hand which frankly hasn't always been the case. Uh, and so we want to make sure not only are we, as has been said, focused on the commercial properties where people go to work, or even the properties that we own and maintain and use for the provision of government services, we want to make sure every incentive is available. So building owners uh, will seek to lower their costs and keep their units affordable um, by going green. Uh, we are proud that we are a green city and we get greener each and every day. Uh, this year, uh, actually, last year, uh, we signed the largest wind power agreement of any municipality in the United States, uh, which will save uh, Washington, D.C., $45 million over 20 years. Uh, D.C. has the most lead in Energy Star certified buildings in America, and we have one of the strongest stormwater regulations in our country as well. And whenever we sign on to a new project, we have an eye towards sustainability. In fact, uh, the future D.C. United Stadium here in Southwest will be the greenest soccer stadium in the United States, and Capitol Crossing in Ward 2 will be D.C.'s first eco-district with beyond lead platinum status. Uh, we have become also a hub for in the environment and energy decision makers and investors in the clean economy. Uh, just at the end of last year, our, D, uh, our energy and environment director, Tommy Wells, went to Paris to an accept an award because of our forward-thinking um, initiatives, investments, and sustainability, and we're recognized worldwide. Uh, so I want to thank uh, the building owners here, also the residents here who supported this project, uh, and ask you to be ambassadors uh, as we go around the city and talk about what we can do to keep D.C. affordable. Uh, the story that you can tell about this investment, putting the funds together, working with the district, working with the SEU, will make a huge huge, huge difference, not only for the residents here at Channel Square, but across the District of Columbia. So congratulations and good luck. That's a mayor of all the people. I appreciate that. Scott Hickman from Enterprise Community Investment is going to talk about the importance of Enterprise's investment in this project. Not the first investment they've made with us. They've been a tremendous partner throughout. Scott? Good morning. Um, Many of you know Enterprise as uh, helping to finance affordable housing. Um, and as Michael said, we've often partnered with NHT uh, to do just that. And uh, we really appreciate our ongoing partnership with NHT Enterprise. Um, Enterprise is very committed to affordable housing that is environmentally sustainable uh, and, and green, and we lead through our Green Communities Initiative. And so this project is very consistent with that. 
Uh, but it is newer for us to finance solar. Um, and so we're very pleased that we could participate uh, in this installation uh, through a loan, through our uh, Enterprise Community Loan Fund, as well as through an equity investment related to the uh, renewable energy tax credits that this, that this uh, installation generates. And the, w what I want to say about that is that uh, we, um, we're happy that we were able to invest in this project uh, and, and to invest the equity uh, that we did. And it's a good investment for enterprise. Um, but as you may know, when we finance most projects, we serve as an intermediary so that we're, we're helping to get the tax credits to outside investors, banks, and corporations, and others. In this case, enterprise uses its own corporate money to buy those tax credits. So we're investing our own money in, in this installation. And it's a good investment for us. But part of the reason that we're doing it ourselves is because so far it's been very difficult to get the banks, the corporations, those, those regular tax credit investors to invest in solar. So we, may, we all here think this is a, a great opportunity, um, but I'm, I'm saying that because I want to use this opportunity to make a call to action to uh, the banks, the investors that might be here today to see what a great project this is, how important this is for the reasons that Michael mentioned in terms of getting renewable energy into communities, uh, establishing en environmental um, and utility equity for, for residents. Um, and it's time to step up to the plate and, and be part of the solution here um, and make it so that uh, that you're the investor rather than enterprise going forward. Uh, so thanks for being here, and thanks to, Enter uh, to NHT for uh, partnering with us on the deal. So I mentioned that Wells Fargo uh, stepped up to the plate, speaking of stepping up to the plate, and Ashley Williams from Wells Fargo can say a few words. Ashley. My name is Ashley Williams. I'm a community affairs representative for Wells Fargo in greater Washington, DC. And thank you for joining us today for this exciting celebration of environmental entrepreneurship and justice in DC. I want to take a moment to tell you why Wells Fargo is here today and a little bit about our commitment to corporate sustainability and our support of the Neighborhood Housing Trust. Wells Fargo has a strong environmental commitment across our enterprise um, that focuses our environmental sustainability efforts in three primary ways. The first is managing our own environmental footprint. The second is financing customers in the clean tech and renewable energy spaces. And the third is supporting environmental nonprofits, university programs, and early, early stage clean tech startups with grants from the Wells Fargo Foundation. What does this look like in practice? We have more LEED certified square feet than any other financial institution in the world, and we've committed to powering 100% of our operations with clean, renewable energy by 2017. Since, we've, since 2012, we've deployed $52 billion of environmental finance and clean tech activities, and project owned in whole or in part by Wells Fargo have generated 10% of all of the US's renewable energy in 2015. We've also committed to providing $100 million in grant funding to nonprofit organizations and university programs focused on environmental sustainability, clean tech innovation, community resiliency, and environmental education by 2020. I'm very happy to report that we're well on our way to making that goal. I'm very pleased to be here today to celebrate the Channel Square project. We're proud to support projects like Channel Square because they help us realize our own overarching sustainability goal, to accelerate the transition to a lower carbon economy while engaging citizens and the community in the process. Our community lending and investment manager, Eileen Stenerson, who unfortunately couldn't be here today, has worked with NHT for years to support the creation of affordable housing in communities nationwide. And we're grateful for her leadership and the partnership she's nurtured. I want to thank Eileen and her team for all of their hard work that have brought us together today. I'd also like to thank Michael 
um, and the NHG team for their collaboration, their vision, and their leadership. Wells Fargo's Community Lending and Investment Group made a $750,000 equity equivalent investment to NHT in 2014, and with this long-term subordinate funding, NHT has so far funded four projects totaling in 319 units of multifamily affordable housing in markets including Escondido, California, Lincoln, New Hampshire, Antrim, New Hampshire, and Sunbury, North Carolina. In addition to being preserved as affordable rental units, which is a challenge in so many markets across the country, 200 of these units will also get significant energy efficiency upgrades. We see Channel Square as a demonstration project that can inspire similar initiatives that bring the promise of clean, renewable energy to affordable housing programs so that the benefits of a lower carbon economy can be enjoyed by all. Thank you very much. Next is uh, Ted Trebu from DC Sustainable Energy Utility, who, as I mentioned, has been with us from the beginning. Ted? Thank you. M Michael, thank you very much, and good morning to all of you. On behalf of the DC Sustainable Energy Utility, it is indeed a pleasure to be here this morning to celebrate the, uh, the Channel Square building of the, the project. The wind up here is, is uh, very strong. Um, we partner with the District Department of Energy and the Environment, and I see many people from the department out here today, and so let me thank them very much for the continued partnership over the last five years, as well as we have partnered with National Housing Trust. When the mayor came into office, we've been doing these low-income solar projects for about five years now, but when the mayor came into office about 18 months ago, she asked us to really redouble our efforts to bring more solar to low-income communities, and we have taken the charge very, very seriously, and we welcome projects like this as we bring them on board. But it's not just the solar that brings us here today. The solar is extremely important. In addition to the solar, the DC Sustainable Energy Utility helped with the lighting in the building, the HVAC system in the building, and many other systems, the boiler here, that all told will result in over $2.7 million in savings to this building alone over the lifetime of those measures that have been installed. $2.7 million that can be reinvested here versus paid out to the utilities. We thank you very, very much. And I also want to single out Manzi Talwar from our staff and Yoakam Poot from our staff who worked so hard to make this project a reality. Madam Mayor, thank you so much for allowing us to be here to serve the residents of the District of Columbia. Like you, I'm a, a, a lifelong, I'm a fourth generation Washingtonian. I think you're like a fifth or something like that. And, uh, and it makes us so proud to see buildings like this come back to life and serve our, our beloved residents of the city. Thank you so much. So at the Trust, we never do anything without the residents. And we have two stalwart residents we're going to speak very briefly today, Mrs. Ball and Carolyn Mitchell, about their work here. We couldn't be here today without the residents. The residents chose us. The residents had a right to choose anybody they wanted. They chose Somerset Development and NHT Enterprise, and we're grateful for that every day. Mrs. Ball. Hi, my name is Yvonne Ball. Normally, when I'm standing at a podium, I'm ready to pray. But I'm just come here to say uh, I've been here for a while in Channel Square. I've raised four kids here. I've raised four, four children here who've grown. And I'm proud to be a partner with National Housing Trust, leading in the city with solar initiative. And I want to say Channel Square is a great place to be. Like I said, I raised four babies here. And they are strong. They are thriving. And I just. Thank God. Amen. So the first time I met Carolyn Mitchell, she was meeting with the ANC to get some kind of permission for, for something. I forget. And, and she looks the same as she did two or three years ago. I don't know. Maybe it's just my eyesight. But you look pretty good. So Carolyn Mitchell. Thank you, Mike. I'm excited today because when this project really started, it was in 2012. That's when we met Somerset and NHT. And as he said, we chose them. And we chose them because of 
two things. One thing was affordability. And as you know, for all of you who live here in the district, you know how high rent is. We have a lot of long-term senior citizens here, and we didn't want them to have to move. So with that, we went to them and we said, so how are you going to keep this pro property affordable? Well, they came back, they brought Jared in, and they began to talk to us about the solar panels. And I work for a nonprofit organization that deals with that as well. So I was like, yeah, okay, I know the benefits of having that. Having them will help keep our energy costs down, which means it will help keep our rent affordable. I'm excited today because this is my first time seeing our solar panels. These are ours. Why? Because we're in partnership with NHT in Somerset. And it's exciting, this will probably be my last time up here, but uh, it's, it's gorgeous, it's exciting to see these because we work, you know, we live through the constructions, we live through the pounding and, and the trucks and the cars and the construction guys. And for me to see something that you've been working on finally happen is such an accomplishment and so exciting. We thank all of you who had a part in making this become a reality. Because, I mean, we have 223 units here. So 223 units mean a lot of savings to a lot of people. So thank you for our solar panels. That concludes what we have to say today. I want to thank you all for coming, and in the words of George Harrison, here comes the sun. Or we're going to do a ribbon cutting. <laughs>